Welcome to Fellowship on Happy Sabbath Shabbat this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. It's encouraging to be with you this morning. Um, I want to start off by going straight into Matthew. And we're going to go to Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to talk about verse 17 through 20. It says, this is speaking of Christ fulfilling the law. So if you have your holy word and you'd like to follow along with me. Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one title will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Encouraging words. Not only is Messiah saying that we must understand the fulfillment of law, fulfillment in not to destroy the law, but to bring it back but into our hearts. Also, assuredly saying that there will still be heavens, I say to you, still heavens and earth pass away. One jolt, one jot, or one title will by no means pass with the law till this, till all is fulfilled. So meaning, everything has to take place before the full covenant, the full law of that covenant can be completely fulfilled. Okay? What is fulfillment? Let's talk about fulfillment today on Shabbat. How is everybody doing today? How's everybody feeling? You know what? We're going to take a moment, especially for those. Um, this is going to be for the parents. We're going to have 20 minutes here with the parents, single parents, and uh, parents, mom, dad, if you're there, and also single mothers, single parenting. Um, gentlemen, so if you are a single parent, you're welcome to listen. My head is covered, so... I just want to say um, that we want to go ahead and ask the Heavenly Father, Abba, we ask that you surround our hearts and minds with truth, with joy, with your commandments on our hearts. And as we work through and we repent of our sins, and as we continually come before you, Father, through your Son, Messiah, who is the King, who is Christ, who is the Melech, he is the Lord of lords and kings of all kings. As he surrounds us and we walk in his presence and we follow him, Father, we go through him to get to you, Father. So we ask for Holy Spirit in this morning, in this day. We also ask for those who are sickened or those who are feeling ailments, those who are weakened in, in their soul by something vexed or afflicted, that they come out of that for this moment. And that we rejoice, Father, and have fellowship together as we bring all of us together, Father, in unity and love. And we pray all these things we ask. Amen. All right. So, again, I want to talk about being the salt and the light of the world. Again, so if you go to chapter 5, now this is just a little bit ahead of this. Verse 13 through 16 says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So they want to throw out the, the, the ones, the individuals, the brethren who care about Messiah. They want to throw out and trample over you because you want to do what Messiah says says, you are the light of the world. A city is set on a hill, cannot be hidden, because it's seen. It stands out, just as I said, with the candlesticks. Our, our, the oil that's within us, we don't want that oil to lose light. We don't want it to, to go out. It's just as if you have a candle at night, or you have a, a lit lamp. Okay, even a, a lamp that was probably back in the 18, 1900s, and you're, you're trying to get around, and you're, you're trying to see, 
we don't want to lose that light in the fellowship, especially today, that the, the fellowshipping and the understanding and truth, the truth of everything that we are all going through, that is what's going to keep you from losing the salt and the light that you are. Just as the Messiah was the light of the world. Verse 15. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The Father is looking for those who want to be helping others to come to Christ. This is constantly a call in these last days. It's constantly a call in these last days. So what I'd like to do is just go through, um, if you're new to the Sabbath, if you're new to understanding it, uh, I have to say that I am not always perfect. You see, we're not perfect. We sin. When we understand the rewards of the Sabbath, when we understand how rewarding it is in our hearts, our minds, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit working within us, it becomes such a blessing. It's a restful time. It's a time where um, you're not feeling that sickness and that anguish. Okay, you're not feeling that for that moment because you're fellowshipping and you're feeling confident and you're feeling um, courageous and bold to say, you know what, I'm going to take this time for the Father. Now some may be in a walk daily where they are reading, they are uh, meditating upon the Holy Word, so you're constantly in that. So on that Sabbath day, on that Saturday, the Holy Shabbat, it's a convocation where you are able to sit and rest, have time with your family, have prayer time with family, speak about the things that you're concerned with for the week, the things that may um, be worrisome to you because we want to throw all our burdens upon the Father. So I just want to go ahead and go through a few of these um, Sabbath scriptures for brethren, for those young, uh, for those young mothers or those the single mothers or married uh, mothers who usually on Saturday, what, Saturday morning, you, you may be asked to make a huge breakfast. And you're saying, no, we're provided with what we have here. You may start Friday night to maybe cook something and ask the children to join in. So these are the things that we can do as parents. It's a hard time, especially if you are married. Especially if you are, you have a spouse and you're concerned with what's going on. You might be worried about yard work. You might be worried about um, getting the house painted or getting it, the firewood in because we're getting closer to the winter. But as we think about this, is are, are we putting forth the kingdom? So whatever we do, we're doing it for the will of the Father. We're giving Him glory, praise, and honor constantly. What are we doing to glorify His name, His kingdom, His message? You know? So if we do have to go out, if we do have to leave the house, are we taking um, a drive with our children and, and showing them, you know, what the Father made these beautiful trees. What are, what are we doing... Um, Excuse me. What are we doing that represents everything's coming off now? <laughs> and this sometimes happens. So what are we doing to um, sanctify that time? It might be one hour that you are intense with the word with your, with your spouse on Saturday because you will have to have time with your spouse. And if you are single, a single mother, single father, you have to have time with your children and you have to have time with the Heavenly Father as well, right? So it's not just about you being separated from everyone else. It's how you are together as, as a married couple or how you are as a single parent for yourself to have time with the Heavenly Father first and then join your children and the family. Okay, so... Let's go to the first one, which would be Romans 9.29 on Shabbat. You could say Sabbath, Shabbat. So, um, and as you learn that word, as you understand that, it will take you into a uh, real close meaning with our Father to understand, Abba, how, um, how you feel inside, how he brings joy to your heart when you have time with him, quiet time with him. 
Romans 9, 29. Romans 9, 29 says, And as Isaiah said before, unless the Lord on Shabbat had left us a seed, we would have become like Sodom and we would have been made like Gomorrah. Why? Because they were constantly in sin. I'm sure they weren't even thinking about anything on Sabbath, but to sin. That's how it became. That's what Sodom and Gomorrah was. It was full of filth. We remove ourselves from that filth. It's a good time to reflect and write things down, take notes. What do we want to work on? What is it that we personally want to work on in our relationship with our Heavenly Father, especially as a single parent? So then you have, let's go to James 5, 4. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the reapers have re reached the ears of the Lord on Sabbath. So, when you've worked and you've, you've dealt with all these things, you've seen all of this corruption, and as it says fraud, on that Saturday, you're able to get rid of all that. You're able to slow down. You're able to talk to your Heavenly Father. You're able to put the cry out and, and give Him all your woes, your cares, and to be, it's a restful time at the same time. And some may say, wait a minute, the Father is constantly dealing with prayer and everything. Yes, He is, but I really, on Sabbath, if I could try not to have to burden Him and just find joy in His creation, that's what I'm going to do. If I, if I can think about it that way. Um, and as you move into understanding fully what it means, you're going to understand your relationship with your Heavenly Father on that morning of Sabbath. Okay, so let's go to Exodus 28. Exodus 28 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And if you would take time this morning, if you get that time to go ahead and, and read chapter 20, it's going to break it down for you with the commandments. It's a wonderful uh, opportunity to go back and reflect upon that. If you already have been dealing with um, the understanding of many will pull you away from Sabbath, they will try to make you do other things on that day. Even my myself, I, I'm telling you, it's been a temptation in the past. Um, some will say, yeah, we're not supposed to buy ourselves, but you know what? As you learn to appreciate the Sabbath, it will come to your heart more and more what you are to do. It has to be a personal relationship with the Heavenly Father. It has to be a personal relationship with the Messiah personal it has to be a close relationship it's a good time to get crying out in joy it really is bring praise just start singing to to the heavenly father okay and then uh exodus 31 13 let's go there Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbaths you will keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sacrifices you. Sanctifies you, not sacrifice you. I'm so sorry. Lord who sanctifies you. So it's a blessing. It's a time of rejoicing and blessing. I'm going to tell you, for being a parent, what about for the ones who are trying to bring you away? from that truth and that word and that um, rejoicing in the spirit with your Heavenly Father at that night time. So Saturday night comes around, oh, can you go out with me to the club? Can you go do this with me? Can we go, um, let's just go, um, let's go on vacation to New York and get us some clothes today. I just, that's kind of far out for many of us. We can't, I, that's not even in my mind, but it's just an example. It's a reference to that's the way the world is, just a Sodom and Gomorrah. Go out, okay, have your morning time, have your afternoon. When the sun goes down, guess what? I want you to go out with me to club. I want you to go out with me to a dance. I want you to go do this, go do that. And then you just gave up everything that you already worked so hard for on that Saturday. 
These are things we contemplate, especially as single parents, right? Especially as single parents. Okay, constantly combating what with the work schedule, the work week, if you are working, if you are not. Battling with time alone, battling with sleep at the proper time. Those folks will, in, will try to tempt you and try to um, pull you away from the truth and what you should be doing. So then what do we have to do? We have to say, you know what, Father, we know it's really tough for us right now. However, we are going to, we are going to, so we're going to keep going. We're going to pick up, we're going to pick up what's important to us and we are going to walk we are going to walk we know that messiah was the cornerstone we have a rock to follow we have um a way of of learning to be appreciative with good guidance and instruction from the holy word from the word that he gave us to put into our hearts to acknowledge and so we have to be strong, and it can be real tough at times. It's the time to rise up, be strong on a day. And that's hard for some, especially if they're working two or three jobs, or if they're uh, going to school. Where are our priorities at? And that's the tough questions we ask ourselves. These are the tough questions we have to work through as a family and as you build on your relationship with your Heavenly Father. Okay, so the last one we're going to go through, Mark 2.27. Mark 2.27 says, And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man. And not man for the Sabbath. See, and some want to be selfish on that day. They want to um, make excuses. So try and be lazy where, okay, um, let me say this again. Give me one second. Uh, 27. And he said to them, Messiah said the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So it was made for us to rest. It was made for us to understand how to relax and to, to also understand holiness, a good day to study on holiness. Um, but it was not man for the Sabbath. So once to dictate or control. It's just like your job. It may be a question. You choose not to work on Saturday. And your your boss, your employer says, you need to come in no matter what. Well, no, that's the only time I have for my family to sit and to congregate together in fellowship in our home and to also fellowship with others and to get encouragement. Are we going to stand? Are we going to take a stand? At some point, we do take that stand. And then you decide, I'm not going to be working there anymore. That's kind of tough to do if that's what your provision is. But as these last days get so critical, believe me, being... Being a part of others that want to do what the, what the Father says, being a part of that is going to it's going to be so sweet. It's going to bring you in because you need that closeness. You want to be with others who also share in the same priorities and fellowship and the same um, understanding of the Father, right? So as these times go, um, I mean, the days go faster and faster and faster. And as we're waiting to be caught up in the clouds, we're waiting to understand that. We take that seriously, that time that we're able to have. Okay? Never take it for granted. I don't take any of you for granted. I appreciate you. And I thank you for your encouragement. I, I love receiving phone calls. Thank you, sister. You know who you are. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. And so we want to always, always, be mindful of someone else who needs a moment, who, who has a question or wants to know more. I have to also learn more. It doesn't matter if I'm making a video. I also have to heed those same instructions. It's a time to prayer. It's a good time to, re to you know, and I, like I say, on Sabbath is rest. I'm, I'm all week long. Meditating upon more, researching upon more of the word. But I also want to remember that if my heart is in it, I'm repenting for it. 
that I'm truly sorry for anyone that I ever offended or anything that's ever taken place that wasn't correct. Okay? So with that being said, like I said, you have to get your house in order, right? Your house in order so that there's no house, there's no division. And I'm telling you, even within my house, there is a, there was a slight division that had to go. The only way that can, can be a unit in this family, that family could be together, is if we're all serving the same Father, if we're all under the same instructions. The, the Holy Word is beneficial for teaching, reproving, and setting things straight. But if you are in a house that is divided, it won't stand. And some of us are in situations you cannot change the situation you're in. But you can change the way you deal with it. You can change the way you receive it and how you speak to someone. Your tongue can either speak good things or bad things. Okay? Your mouth. Matthew 12, 36 and 37, that we don't speak idle words because man will be judged for it. So as we learn to speak more clearly, as we more learn to be more encouraging, as we learn to fellowship, especially especially on Holy Shabbat, Sabbath, what are we also doing? Taking the time to understand how do we clean our house out? You clean it out one step at a time. You clean it out at one thought at a time, one biblical verse at a time. And you start narrowing down your the path that you're following Messiah on. And if the next one will be for teenagers. So if you would please bring your teenagers to this 10-minute Shabbat, Shabbat video. It would be wonderful and many blessings to your family. So I will be talking to them because you know what? This is a time. Even the teenagers, even my own, will be tempted. And if one is not in accordance, they're not in accordance. We pray over that, but we have to let things be as they are. We go to the Father all the time first. Never go to man or the law. Always go to the Father first. He directs you. And while you're waiting on that reply, you keep the rest of your household in order. And that's what you must do. That's what we must do in order to be of that remnant, to be of that, um, that, that group that's separating themselves from the world. One step at a time. All right? That being said, you guys, love and prayers. Pray that you have a wonderful day and Shabbat. Silan agreement of this video, this time we spent together. Single parents, single mothers. Mothers, thank you. Till next time. Shalom.